my name is Melissa and I wanted to tell you guys a story about how I got introduced to speech and language pathology. As you guys know, I was a teacher here in Brooklyn, New York in the charter school systems and I just left that job to pursue my graduate studies full time. So as I am pursuing this degree full time, I just wanted to tell you guys the story as to how I got introduced to SLP work. And also this is the story I used in my personal statements, which got me admitted into the program. So with that being said, sit back, relax. This is a good story time and I'm excited to tell you guys my story. So I got my undergraduate degree in English at CUNY Brooklyn College in 2017, which shout out to CUNY schools. I absolutely loved my undergraduate experience. I highly suggest everyone go to a CUNY school for undergrad, affordable, local, and just really good education. But I went to Brooklyn College for my undergrad. I graduated with my English degree in 2017. And at the time, while I was in school, I was working retail. I worked at Urban Outfitters part time. And when I graduated, I realized I wasn't getting enough hours. I just had this degree. I just got this degree. I'm like, what am I going to do with this degree? I can't fold clothes with a bachelor's degree. Like it didn't feel good to me. So I was looking up jobs that people can do with an English degree fresh out of college. And teaching was one of them. So I am not a stranger to education as a few of my family members are educators. So I decided that I would rear off into that career field for now until I found something that I really wanted to do. Cause I never really wanted to become a teacher because I saw what the teaching was like behind the scenes. But I'm like anything but retail right now. So after I left Urban Outfitters, I started working at a daycare in a very affluent neighborhood. I mean, the parents were very wealthy. They had a lot of access. The children had a lot of resources and I was exposed to a lot, which I'm so thankful for. So at this daycare, I was working with the oldest kids. So this would be considered 3K. The following year, they would go into public school and start kindergarten. So at this age, they're learning how to identify their name. They're learning how to write their name, write their letters, learning their co their colors, counting. We're doing read aloud. They're learning the basic like pragmatics, how to interact with each other, how to, how to advocate for yourself. So that was really eye opening as far as like early childhood development because prior to that, I had no idea how children developed. And the teacher who I was assisting that year, she was very well, known as to the person you go to with any questions as far as like is this supposed to happen now is that supposed to happen next like I had a really good mentor when I started working at that job and I'm so thankful so as I'm working with these children and my teacher um, and my mentor a parent came to us with some concerns about a speech problem that she had with her son so she was saying how he would come home and saying that kids weren't really playing with him, how he didn't really have any friends, he didn't want to speak up in class because people made fun of him, and that really bothered her. So she uh, brought that to, to our attention. Now, this child didn't necessarily have a speech delay. He had more of a speech difference where he would say his R's a little differently, where he wouldn't really pronounce other words. And it was hard for the other kids to understand him. So he felt really, it was messing with his confidence. So um, my mentor, she took this to administration and the following week he was given a speech and language pathologist. Now, prior to me knowing what this person did, I just thought that she took him out of the classroom two to three days out of the week just to play with him separately so he wouldn't feel left out and then bring him back in the classroom. But sometimes she would come and play with us in the classroom and she would work one-on-one -on -one with him and give him ideas and different techniques on the way to say things, how to say things, his lip placement, his tongue placement. So I was noticing this and I took her to the side one day and I'm like, are you a play therapist? Like, what is it that you actually do? So I was asking her these questions because she intrigued me. So then she told me she was a speech and language pathologist and that she treats diagnosed and assesses speech disorders in children. And I was like, wow, that's really interesting. 
but then she also told me that she can work with TB, tra traumatic brain injury patients, stroke patients, she can work in the NICU, she can work with children in the setting that we were in, which is a daycare, but then she can also work in a school. So I'm like, wow, like this one career field can give you such a range of options. I'm very interested in that because I love when I can do a, a wide variety of things with the knowledge that I've learned, right? Like I can assess a speech disorder, I can go into a school, I can work with babies with swallowing disorders. Like that really excited me. So I went home, I did my research and I saw all of the, the requirements to be a speech pathologist and I was like, oh no. Like I just graduated with a degree, like if I have to do all of this to become an SOP, I don't think I'm gonna do it. So I worked at this job for another two years and then in 2020, in February 2020, I got a job working at a charter school in Brooklyn. So the following week, literally I got the job maybe February 17th, the following week we got shut down for quarantine because of COVID. So I was teaching second grade online. And while we're teaching, um, two of my students began getting telehealth therapy. So I was looking at how telehealth worked and I didn't really know these children because online it was really hard for us to build that relationship. So when we finally transitioned to a hybrid model, I realized that the, their communication was affecting the way they interacted with their peers, their confidence, how they participated in a class, how they understood classwork. So I had to fill out a lot of IEPs, which is an individual education plan, so that these children were able to get services outside of telehealth because we were doing a hybrid model now. So apparently the therapists that was available online to do telehealth were not online to, were not available to come inside of the school. So for the entire year, my kids were not getting therapy. They were not getting the support that they needed to succeed in my class. So of course their grades are slipping, their peers are not interacting with them. They're only talking to the teachers because we take the time to understand and listen to what they're saying. So I'm noticing the deficit in the resources. So I'm like, wow, if these children had speech therapy, then they would be doing so much better because they're getting the support that they need. So I revisited my Google search about what it takes to become a speech pathologist. And I realized if you don't have a degree in speech pathology, you have to do these prerequisite courses to get into a graduate program. So I enrolled in the prerequisite courses and I started taking them online at Brooklyn College, again, because I was already a student there. So I just changed my major to postgraduate. And I started taking my prerequisite courses at Brooklyn College and my journey began from there. For the next two, three years, hybrid and virtual, I was taking my prerequisite courses online while I was teaching. It was very hard because I had to do lesson plans, I had to do parent teachers conference, I had to do professional developments, along with taking anatomy, phonology, um, neuroanatomy. I was like, my brain was spread very thin throughout those next two years. And with prerequisite courses, in order to get into a graduate program, you cannot get under a B. So I was really, I was really working extra hard to get into this program, finished my prerequisite courses, applied to grad school, got into grad school, left my job, and here we are. So I'm really excited to embark on this journey to become a speech and language pathologist. And this step, me getting to my, into a master's program, is just step one of many. I mean, I have to do internships, externships i have to do my clinical fellowship year which happens right after i graduate i have to do a year of work under the mentor in the setting that i i choose i have to take the praxis exam like there's a couple of things that happens before i can, can become a competent clinician get my c's but i'm really excited because every time i'm a step closer to my goal i think about my my students who needed that support and weren't able to get that support because no speech pathologist was available to them. So that is the story about how I got introduced into speech and language pathology and how I was admitted into my graduate program. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.